Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that, that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. your glory eternal three and one and we praise your power majestic one and three keep us steadfast in faith defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless love father son holy spirit one god now and forever amen the Holy Gospel for this Trinity Sunday comes to us from Matthew, the 28th chapter, 
beginning at the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Last week was Pentecost Sunday, one of my absolute favorite Sundays in the entire church year. When I served as pastor to several international congregations, we actually had Pentecost Sunday every single week. You see, international English-speaking congregations are made up of people from all over the world who speak multiple languages. There are business people involved with international corporations and agencies, embassy staff and ambassadors, students and teachers, as well as some people from the host country. Together they form an amazing and colorful tapestry. So it grieves my heart every time someone is judged by their skin color rather than the content of their character. As Americans, we pride ourselves in being fair and just. Our founding documents, such as the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, have enshrined those principles in civil liberties. Yet here we are again, our sinfulness of thinking that we are somehow better than others, for whatever the reason, is on full display. Pride and arrogance go hand in hand, as they often do. Martin Luther King Jr. was right when he said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about those things that matter. He went on to say, Let no man pull you so low as to hate him. But the quote that resonates with me today is this, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great of a burden to bear. Please join me in a moment of prayer. God of justice in your wisdom, you created all people in your image without exception. Through your goodness, open our eyes to see the dignity, beauty, and worth of every human being. Open our minds to understand that all of your children are brothers and sisters in the same human family. Open our hearts to repent of racist attitudes, behaviors, and speech which demean others. Open our ears to hear the cries of those wounded by race, racial discrimination and their passionate appeals for change. Strengthen our resolve to make amend for past injustices and fill us with courage that we might seek to heal wounds, build bridges, and establish peace and equality for all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is Holy Trinity Sunday, always the Sunday immediately after Pentecost, and my theme today is heresies were good for the church. And that was going to be my adult uh, study during the middle of March when all of a sudden COVID-19 made an unannounced intrusion into all of our lives. Heresies are good for the church, but why? Let me begin by, de let me begin by defining our terms. Heresy means holding an idea or opinion strongly at odds with what is generally accepted. It is not the same as apostasy. Apostasy is the abandonment or turning away of the Christian faith. As the early Christians came together and tried to figure out precisely who Jesus was, there were different and competing ideas. Some of these have the distinct distinction of being heresies like Gnosticism. They were the ones, the people that said that uh, human souls were trapped up in physical or material uh, bodies within this world. Many of the Gnostics saw Jesus as having a, a secret knowledge about God that he shared with his disciples. Marcionism was another group in the early church. They believed that God of Jesus and of the New Testament was totally different from the God of the Old Testament 
because they saw in the Old Testament all of these random killings, and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't equate that with the God of Jesus. Montanism uh, relied on the prophetic revelations of the Holy Spirit. Those are the people in the early church that were very much like uh, the Pentecostal movement that is today. Adoptionism were those people that said that Jesus was not born the Son of God, but was adopted by God at his baptism, or maybe later at his resurrection. Doicism, those people who believed that Jesus was a pure spirit, and that his physical form and life and death were only an illusion. So what the early Christians desired was an orthodox viewpoint. Orthodox simply means right opinion. Early church leaders wanted everyone to be on the same page when it came to the understanding of who Jesus was. A shared understanding of Jesus would greatly assist the church in what they could share with others. And we need to remember that it has been estimated that the early church was growing by 10% every year in those first few years. Heresies and the heretics that wrote them were not bad people with evil viewpoints. They were often very intelligent, well-meaning, and extremely faithful to their understanding of God. In fact, some of the great early church leaders at one time or another had embraced some of these other divergent understandings. So I reiterate my theme. Heresies were good for the church. But why? Three reasons, I think. First of all, they helped to form the New Testament portion of the Bible as we have it. For example, Tatian, an early Syrian convert to Christianity, blended all four of the Gospels into one. He called it the Diatessaron, which means four into one. While his intent may have been good, early church fathers believe it took away from the power of the four separate Gospels. And this was before 180 A.D., telling us that the four Gospels were already accepted by most, if not all, of the different pockets of early Christianity. Having heresies around helped early Christian leaders define the Christian faith, especially to the Gentile world. It also proved that Christianity was more than a philosophy, but the belief that God had entered and changed the world through Jesus Christ. Secondly, heresies helped the church to write down creeds that could be recited in worship. Creeds generally arose and were written to combat heresies. Nearly 2,000 years later, some of us can recite the creeds from memory as a statement of our faith. I remember that reading about American POWs during the Vietnam War and how they worked to stay sane. For the ones who had been brought up in churches, they often said that they would sing parts of the liturgy and recite the Lord's Prayer or the Apostles' Creed. What they had memorized in their youth sustained them later on in their imprisonment. Thirdly, heresies brought the leaders of the church together in councils. Because the early church was persecuted for the first 300 years, it grew and developed quite independent of each other. When Emperor Constantine stopped the persecution of the church, they were allowed, even encouraged, to come together. And these councils helped to unite the Christian church. And it was the heresies, once again, those divergent views on Jesus that helped the church to define and redefine itself. One of the ways the early Christians understood God and Jesus was the term Trinity. While this idea comes from our Gospel reading today from Matthew, the 28th chapter, it was further developed over time. For us, the Trinity is the gift that grounds us in the connection with God, self, others, and the world. In fact, this ancient doctrine dared to affirm that God is relationship itself. Father Richard Rohr, in his book, The Divine Dance, had this interesting observation. For God to be good, God can be one. For God to be loving, God has to be two, because love is always a relationship. But for God to share in excellent joy and delight, God has to be three, because supreme happiness is when two persons share their common delight, with a third party. And we witness this every time when a couple has a baby. What joy and what happiness. The people I have loved the greatest were not just the people who loved me, but people who loved what I love. People who cared about community, 
the gospel, the poor, justice, honesty. This is where the flow was easy, natural, and life-giving. Two people excited about the same thing are the beginning of almost every new creative and risky thing that happens within our world. Surely this is what Jesus meant when he said, when he defined the churches where two or three are gathered together. Having traveled and even lived in lands where Christianity is very, very small, I'm always amazed at the strength and the resilience of the individuals in their small faith communities. In Japan, where Christians make up less than 2% of the population, I remember visiting three small churches that were nearly wiped out by the tsunami after the great Tohoku earthquake, and yet they were still surviving in the midst of that devastation. In Egypt, I have witnessed the amazing strength and witness of the Coptic Church, a church constantly persecuted by the Muslim majority. And of course, in Eastern Europe and in Russia, where communist governments tried to destroy the church for decades, I saw that it had failed. If history is going to teach us any lesson, it is not to underestimate the courage of Christian people, where two or three are gathered together. If we believe in the Trinity, then we must hold fast to the truth that God is community. A completely loving, mutually self-giving, endlessly procreative relationship between equal partners. The good news of the Bible is that we are invited into that relationship. Jesus, the incarnation of God, came to earth to invite us into a relationship with God like no other. and We call that the Trinity. Because faith is our answer to that holy invitation. We give thanks for the saints who have given us our faith that is handed down from generation to generation. But let us not forget this day the heretics who helped Christianity to articulate its beliefs. As for the heretics, their halos may have been off-centered a bit, but their love for understanding Christ was very real. May we be challenged by them, both saints and heretics, to go deeper in our faith. If our current days tell us anything, it is that we still have much to learn on how to love one another. For that opportunity to become more Christ-like each day, we can truly say, thanks be to God. Amen. and merciful God, God of peace, we pray for our church, our nation, the world, and our community. Bring peace to our nation. Fill us with love so that we can have compassion for our neighbors. Heal our hearts and heal our bodies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us strength to deal with these turbulent times and remind us as we are isolated to help our neighbors in need. We pray for our leaders, Give them wisdom to lead our nation and unite us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of peace, provide your healing power among us. Restore hope to those who remain in the depths of depression or despair, those who are grieving. Bring mercy and relief to those who are injured, sick, or suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we thank you for those who endured suffering and who now bask in the glory of God. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give us peace as we live in the hope of our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we pray, pray. Amen. Amen.
We are so grateful for those who continue to pour out their generosity by giving uh, financially to uh, St. Philip Lutheran Church. We know this is a difficult time for many and not all are able to give. And so we are grateful for those uh, who are able to give to still be able to tithe. It's such a gift uh, to be able to give back to God. And that's truly how we see it is that we are giving to God in the ministry that God continues to do in this time of COVID-19, providing resources for people online to grow in their relationship with God, to be able to continue to worship and praise God in this time for what God is doing when we are also in a time of fear and a time of unknown. So thank you for those who continue to give, either by uh, sending a check up to the church or by giving online. If you wish and desire to give at this time, you can go to stphilip-co.org backslash giving, and you can make a gift online there. us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor power nor height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.